Hi there. Good morning. Running around like a crazy person this morning. I feel like, oh my gosh, how can it only be nine o'clock? Um, hi. Hi, hi. Hi, Maureen. Hello. All right. Um, so today we're going to bounce back and forth between Mark and Matthew and take a look at um, the passage where Jesus um, comes to the disciples when they're in the boat in the storm. Um, so we're going to go look at both sets of those passages and then end real quick in First John, which is the first reading for the day. I think tomorrow, I hope that we'll spend a little bit more time in those First John passages because I think they need a little bit of time on their own. But, um, you know, I don't want to keep you all day long. Um, so today is January 6th, um, which... You know, in other countries, the, the Feast of the Epiphany is still always on January 6th. In this country, we've moved it to the um, to the Sunday after the uh, Sunday of its Holy Family. So Christmas, and then the first Sunday after Christmas is the Feast of the Holy Family, and the second Sunday after Christmas is um, Epiphany, um, so that everybody is in church on Epiphany, and it's not another Holy Day of Obligation. But anyway, today is... The Feast of the Epiphany for some of us. We just kind of stick to that whole idea of January 6th being the Feast of the Epiphany. So happy feast. Um, anyway, let's start with the Holy Spirit prayer and then let's take a look, good look at these guys in the boat. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created and you will renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoy his consolations. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay. So, um, let's start in Mark. Uh, let's see. We're at Mark 6, 45. <clears throat> Immediately, he made his disciples get into the boat. Okay, so... Backstory, yesterday we've seen the miracle of the multiplication of loaves and fishes. So long day outside in the green grass, which means it's probably, you know, springtime. Um, and, and now um, we're, <laughs> now we're, um, he sent his disciples to get in the boat and row, right? On the Sea of Galilee. Um, so, Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side, to Bethsaida, while he dismissed the crowd. After saying farewell to them, he went up on the mountain to pray. When evening came, the boat was out on the lake, and he was alone on the land. When he saw that they were straining at the oars against an adverse wind, he came towards them early in the morning, walking on the lake. He intended to pass them by, but when they saw him walking on the lake, they thought it was a ghost and cried out, for they all saw him and were terrified. But immediately he spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. When he got into, then he got into the boat with them, and the wind ceased, and they were utterly astounded, for they did not understand about the loaves, but their hearts were hearted. Okay. So, long day and into a long night, and the disciples are struggling on the Sea of Galilee in this storm. Um, and by the time Jesus comes to them, it's very early morning. So, like the, the, the third watch, you know, that um, 3 a.m. kind of thing. And, um, and they're exhausted because they've been fighting against the storm the whole time. Um, and he tells them that it's him. He reminds them of who he is. Um, but, like, why did he wait? Why did he let them struggle against that storm for so long? Like, they've been struggling against an adverse wind for quite some time. Why did he wait? Um, he let them come to the end of themselves. He let them come to the place where they know they can't do it on their own at all. Um, and, and he actually lets them come... Um, they think it's a ghost. They're terrified. Like they let him, he's let them come to a place where like they think God's abandoned them too. Um, and that is where they're most receptive, right? 
they, there is no recourse. There's nothing else. They want so badly to believe that Jesus is God and God is their savior. Um, they want to believe that. And they've come to the very end. They've come to the, the, the place of their own unbelief. But right on that precipice, he can step in because they're vulnerable. They're open. Um, and they're the most receptive at that place. Um, so they all but think, all but think that God has abandoned them. And then they receive him. Um, I actually like um, Matthew's version more because it tells us a little bit more of the story. We get a little bit um, fuller version in Matthew. Matthew is an eyewitness version. And, um, and he's telling us about Peter in this story. So I'm going to go ahead and read that part so that we can look at the two of them side by side. So I'm in Matthew 14, 22, Matthew 14, 22 to like 33. Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from land, for the wind was against them. And in the early morning, he came walking towards them on the lake. But when the disciples saw him walking out on the lake, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately, Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. So Peter got out of the boat and started walking on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and beginning to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, you of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Okay, there are a lot of places here where um, the version's almost exactly the same. Um, and then there are some, ver some places where it's been filled in a little bit more. So, um, so the one thing, let's talk about Peter. Poor Peter. Peter struggles with faith throughout. Peter will say strong things, you know, when Jesus says, where are you going to go? And he's like, there's no place to go but here. Like, where else would I go? Um, and he protests at the Last Supper when Jesus says that he has to die. And um, he says he'll never deny him, but then he denies him three times. Um, he is this this place of both and, um, this place of, of struggle and doubt, um, and then strong faith. Um, and P and Jesus knows that Peter is going to struggle between faith and doubt throughout Jesus's lifetime. He knows this. This is well before, um, the, the last supper and, um, the, the time leading up to the crucifixion. This is, this is, you know, he, but Jesus knows, Jesus knows this is going to be a problem for him. Um, and we really see it here. We see him say, Lord. So he's calling him Lord. And in the next breath, if it is you. So Lord, and then the if. Um, he, so he says, if it is you, call me to yourself. Like he says, tell me to come, tell me to obey tell me to be to follow you and so jesus does um and and then there's this act of obedience peter obeys jesus's command to come and he's good at that he's good at doing that he's good at at recognizing the command and following but then what happens he's walking on water He's defying gravity. He's doing the supernatural with Jesus. And then he notices where he is. He starts looking around and he notices the strong wind. He sees the adversary. He recognizes the challenges. He takes his eyes off Jesus and he begins to sink again. Um, 
he loses his courage. So that, that phrase where Jesus says, take heart, it is I, um, in other translations, that's have courage, it is I. And it's followed immediately by do not be afraid. So this courage is supernatural courage that Peter has gotten from being in the presence of God. Um, and that courage is available to us too. Um, and we are just as likely as Peter to take our eyes off God, to, to lose the vision, to forget that we are in his presence. And then what happens? Then we start to sink. Take your eyes off Jesus, start to sink. Um, so when he shifts his gaze and he notices the strong wind and he takes in his surroundings and he recognizes that this is impossible for humans, he begins to sink. And what does Jesus do? He reaches out, he catches him, and and translation tells us that he grips us fir- he grips him firmly. He gives him, he holds him with a firm grip. Um, and he asks Peter, "Why are you of two minds? Like, what is the deal, dude? Like, why do you call him Lord and then look around?" Why do you keep doing this? And why will you continue to keep doing this? Peter has this habit and Jesus is trying to break him of the habit of calling him Lord. And then in the very next word saying, if. So what does he do? Jesus takes Peter with a firm grip and he gets into the boat with him. And, um, Lots of commentaries tell us the boat is the church, that he is in the church. He is in the boat with us in the church. And this is where the storm is calm. And this is where um, our faith is strengthened. And the entire episode, if you will, is a study in trust um, and in confidence in Jesus's love. Can we be confident that he loves us? Um, and that's what brings us to um, to the reading, the first reading for today, which is 1 John. Um, back where we were yesterday, continuing on, I wanna just pull out one phrase. And today, bearing in mind both Matthew's gospel and Mark's gospel, I want you to think about this one phrase in the first reading today. So we're, I'm going to look at 1 John 4, 16. So we have known and believe the love that God has for us. And I want you to ask yourself, where have you known the love that God has for you? And do you really, really, really believe that he loves you? Can you really believe that you are loved so much that he would climb up on that cross and die for you alone, just you. For we have, so we have known and believe the love that God has for us. Prop your Bibles open to 1 John 4, 16 and just meditate on that today. Ask God to increase your faith, to strengthen the way that you believe, but especially to strengthen the, the way that you believe that you are loved. For we, so we have known and believe the love that God has for us. And then tomorrow, I hope to come back to that First John passage, um, unpack it a little bit more, take today's reading and tomorrow's reading and really go through that. Um, but for today, think about that time in the boat. Think about Peter stepping out onto the water Think about the doubt and then ask yourself, 